Farah Tov, covering my name, Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. It looks like World War III is on the horizon. President Donald Trump is considering this evening here uh, information that has been given out by uh, his uh, military chief there. That is uh, Mr. Mattis there. She uh, is supposed to be briefing him on a possible military options regarding Syria. It's President Bashar al-Assad, who has been accused of gassing his own people. Now, I have to tell you, friends, uh, I'm not necessarily a fan of President Bashar al-Assad on many other issues there, but one thing that has been clear and something we shared even earlier today on a quick take of our broadcast there, back in 2013, it was evident that President Bashar al-Assad, whom I thought was guilty of gassing his own people based on mainstream media that was coming out, but after doing our own investigative research and finding out that Aaron Erdem, the former uh, MP member of the Turkish government, had the smoking gun that clearly saw that Bashar al-Assad was never guilty of the sarin gas attack on his own people in 2013. And that is one of the main reasons why I began on this particular attack as well, began to search to see if there was any evidence that might exonerate him in this case once again. But it wasn't only Aaron Erdem, as we shared earlier today from 2013, United Nations member also saying that he was not guilty. Seymour Hirsch, the investigative journalist from Britain, also had the evidence that Hillary Clinton had moved the sarin gas from Libya to Syria, smuggled it in with the intentions of using it against the people there and blaming it on President Bashar al-Assad. So my concern was is that it was no different now than it was then. And of course, we began to find immediately evidence that supported it. Partisan girl, a very young, a young woman who actually is a, as a, a peace activist living inside of Syria, had the clear evidence already, much evidence, that suggested that in fact, yes, it was all done by the rebels themselves, only to be blamed on Bashar al-Assad. Yana, doing a little bit of investigative work in behind the scenes herself, found out that the Saudis were involved, finding out the intel of when the uh, Bashar al-Assad would be bombing in Idlib, to only coincide that with a gas attack at the same time to make it appear that it was indeed the, uh, the Syrians that were doing the bombing there. So very interesting is the, is the different information is unfolded there, and this is one reason why we realized something was wrong. But don't forget, friends, we had reported ourselves here on the 3rd of April, U.S. moves military equipment in striking distance of Damascus. One day before the sarin gas attack had taken place there in Syria, and it was also the day after President Trump was saying that he wasn't there to try to take uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Assad out of power. He wasn't for regime change. Well, that looks pretty good. But the only problem is, is the very day that President Trump is saying that, we were sharing with you from already happened how that the United States was actually moving in uh, the, the very troops themselves into, into position there. Well, that was kind of odd. Why would he be moving all this, all this, uh, all this uh, military equipment into position if they weren't planning on doing a strike in the first place on Damascus? Why would they be sending it to Beirut? And of course, our good friend Lorenzo here, which is on his channel now and already happened there, uh, he was diligently watching this as the, as the uh, the huge cargo ships were being loaded up. And then the next thing he knows, he predicted it was going to Beirut, only to find out that yes, two ships were going to Beirut, and they ended up both mooring there. Now, one of those ships ended up moving out from Beirut and now is porting down at the uh, at Jordan's Gulf of Aqaba seaport there. So now the United States has military equipment in Beirut, Lebanon, as well as a huge shipment of military equipment in the, uh, at the port of Jordan in the Gulf of Aqaba, on the north end of that. All right, so, but was Trump really aware of this? Did he make the statement knowing that he's shipping military equipment there within striking distance of Damascus? Well, I kind of think that maybe he doesn't know. 
So I do have to stick up for President Trump in this case. Now, some might say, well, that's just a little bit too crazy, Steve. You know, Trump is not that great of a guy. He does have a strong stance with Israel, and I appreciate that about him. But you have to remember, who ordered all that military equipment to be moved to Germany in the first place, all that desert camo equipment to be moved there? It was President Hussein Obama. Barack Hussein Obama. He's the one that ordered it to be moved there. Trump never had anything to do with that. Although he did not stop it from being moved there. And of course it was moved there. From there it was moved to Poland, Poland to Romania, loaded on the ships, and then conveniently moved to Beirut, Lebanon, and also to the country of Jordan. Now, looking at the map of this area right here, let's back out just a little bit. We've got Damascus sitting right here. You got Beirut right there. A westerly, northwesterly attack on the city if they so choose to do so. Israel has moved troops into the Golan for practice right now. Of course, Israel was just recently up there in Greece doing some uh, training there along with uh, the United Arab Emirates, someone they've never trained with before, the Italian government, the United States, all of them working together trying to learn to evade the S-300 missile system. Well, let me ask you this then. If they were there to try to evade the missile system there, were they training here in Greece to be able to evade an attack that they plan on doing on Iran, which is way over here, excuse me, right here? Or were they planning on doing this because the S-300 systems inside Syria? Well, that's a good question, isn't it? A question that I don't necessarily know the answer to. But now we know that Israel, uh, excuse me, uh, the United States moved another ship of the military equipment from Romania down through the straits here uh, of the Suez Canal, down through the Gulf of uh, Suez, up through the Gulf of Aqaba, and now is there to offload there in Jordan. What for? Because they can move all that equipment north of Amman there and then do a, 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 a joint force going into the southern part of Damascus there. Now, that's just speculation. It's a hypothesis that I have myself as I look at the situation that is going on. And we were looking at this already before this gas attack. But was the gas attack a falsified uh, gas attack? Well, even Vanessa Bealey is weighing in on this, that it was not the Assad government that did it. There's just too much evidence that seems to suggest that it was all a planned and orchestrated attack and that these children were killed. Were they killed by sarin gas? Well, they may very well have been. But it's starting to look like that the rebels were the ones that had their hands in on it. If Bashar al-Assad did it, though, as I was in 2013 before I found out the truth about what happened, I would be calling for the same thing. The U.S. needs to go in and do something about it because I have no love for President Bashar al-Assad other than he's a human being. But you know, we had a very interesting comment from one of the Syrian viewers that are listening in from Syria. She's a Christian woman. And she shared with us in the comments on one of our recent videos, she said, tell the Christian community that all the Christians of Syria have stood by President Bashar al-Assad because he is the only one that has ever cared for the Christian community. And she said in there that if the Christians are standing against Assad, then they are standing against the Christian community as well. That was her own words. And she asked us to share that message with you. I think that's an interesting insight from someone there on the ground to give us a different perspective on how things are going. Now, let's take a serious look of what's going on, though. Uh, Rex Tillerson, the Secretary of Defense, watch what he had to say here in a comment today regarding the gas attacks in Syria. To this Let's listen back in here. Fortified all of us and uh, brought to the front pages and to our television screens as well uh, the tragedy that is part of the Syrian conflict. Uh, there is no doubt in our minds uh, and the information we have supports that Syria, the Syrian regime under the leadership of uh, President Bashar al-Assad are responsible for this attack. And I, I think further it is very important that the Russian government consider carefully their continued support for the Assad regime. 
there's two things I think that's very important that we point out here. One, he holds the fact that Assad is responsible for the attack. Doesn't say that Assad carried it out, nor does he say that the Assyrian military carried it out, but he holds him responsible. Second, was an indirect threat to Russia that they should reconsider their support for the Assad regime. That lets us know that there is a good chance that military actions will be carried out. Before the Syrian gas attack even happened, we were already seeing evidence of that. One of our friends that, 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 that shared with us information of a company they work for that deals heavily with Israel, that Israel was possibly planning an air campaign on Syria in the coming weeks. Then we felt we didn't, weren't going to even say anything about that until Simon told the interview that Yana Benoun did, uh, which you can catch that interview on her channel, Rise Up Children of God. But he says in the interview there that Israel was preparing a strike on Iran, there, that, they, that Israel has bombers in Saudi Arabia, as well as that Israel had bombers in Greece and were training there to overcome the S-300 systems. Which, by the way, it's not just Iran that has the S-300, it's also Saudi Arabia, excuse me, Syria. Now, in another statement here, where we have uh, uh, Mr. James Mattis, the Secretary uh, of Defense, is briefing President Trump on the type of actions that could be taken. One of those actions is using Navy ships to use cruise missiles against Bashar al-Assad. That'll put Russian troops in danger. And of course, that will also find out just how well the S-300 or the S-400 system may work inside of Syria because Russia would have to shoot it down. And if they don't shoot it down and Russian troops are involved or death or casualties as a result, then Russia will retaliate. And you know, guys, many times we tell you about things that are that is never reported in Western media that goes on in Syria. Many times we've done that. Definitely stay tuned, stay in touch here with Israeli News Live because we're going to tell you the facts. And you know, I love my people. I love Israel. I know there's many people in Israel that do not want to get involved in the Syrian conflict whatsoever. Even though biblically we know the prophecies that Damascus will be a ruinous heap. We know these things are going to happen. You know, but we don't want to be part of something that is not right. If Syria were to attack Israel, and that could easily happen even without Israel going into there. If the United States retaliates over the chemical uh, weapons uh, that they're blaming on Bashar al-Assad, Assad may retaliate on Israel. Well, if that happens, then Israel has every right to defend itself, and I agree with that. All right, so keeping all these things in mind. Now, I do see... Rabbi Lau, former uh, chief rabbi of Israel, he's now rabbi in Tel Aviv, uh, who's also a Holocaust survivor, is calling uh, the situation in Syria a Holocaust. But if you look carefully in this article here, what I'm concerned about that is Rabbi Lau is actually building uh, a, 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 how would you say it? He's building a case for the Israeli government to take actions against the Syrian government and to take Assad out of the picture there. And he's building that support by the Israeli people to follow suit. And of course, Israeli people are looking at what mainstream media is saying as well, that it was actually Assad that gassed his own people. And so therefore, the, the Israeli people are outraged by it. And, and rightfully so, because if he did, I'm outraged as well. But what's even worse is if Somebody in the background, if let's say Assad didn't do it, and the evidence is pointing to the, the possibility that the Syrian rebels actually did this, backed by the US, CIA, and, and NATO and their allies, then how wicked and evil is that? Because 2013, the evidence clearly is there that it was, it was ISIS that did the dirty work, but they did it for the superpowers in behind the scenes. That is what is a shame. And by the way, Hillary Clinton's name was all over moving that sarin gas into Syria, as we've already brought out. Guys, enough on that right there. A serious uh, incident in Israel. An IDF soldier uh, has been killed today by a car ramming attack. 
very distraughtful situation. Our condolences and prayers go out to the family there. The Intifada has not stopped. The Third Intifada, as uh, the Palestinian people are calling this, uh, they're still using the knife. When we were there in Israel the other day, there was a woman that was stabbed to death. Uh, and now a car ramming attack. They, the Israeli authorities have said that with the, uh, the Passover season being here, that we could expect an uptick in these types of attacks. Also, Rex Tillerson, Secretary of State, is also stating uh, uh, a very strong words regarding North Korea. I say strong words, a very uh, baffling statement as reported by the Independent here, but uh, his words always say, a lot in my opinion. He stated here, the United States has spoken enough about North Korea. We have no further comment. I am very concerned at this point now, friends, as we have been stating all along, the United States has been building up to take down Kim Jong-un. I can fully understand why. I, I can't say that uh, Kim Jong-un has done anything but put himself and his own people uh, in the crosshairs of the United States government with all of their provocations that they're doing with nuclear weapons there in North Korea uh, and so much evil that has gone on in that country. Very, very much evil that has happened there. Uh, but it does look like the United States is definitely fixing to make that move. Uh, the Philippines uh, president also taken over an island in the South China Sea. That's only going to provoke issues with China. Uh, the issue with the U.S. taking down North Korea will also make an uneasy situation with China uh, in that region of the world. If the United States also strikes Syria, if Russia gets involved in it, China being infuriated over there, uh, over North Korea, and even with the Philippines and the, and the issues that are happening there, we could end up seeing a global conflict unravel in a very short period of time. I'm Stephen Benoon. Hate to be the bearer of bad news, guys. I really do. Uh, Anyway, pray for us. Uh, we do appreciate your prayers and appreciate your support for the work that we do here. Uh, visit us on our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.